so I brought this idea to Paul Vanderclay and and the Hive Mind over there at TLC, and I appreciated the the feedback, particularly Paul kind of maybe putting on some breaks there with regards to Russell Brand and the Great Awakening comparison. Let me know what you think about this, the the Awakening, maybe not like the 1770s Awakening that featured sort of fiery preachers. And I think that's to Paul's point here about the communion of the saints. And maybe we're seeing the role of the preacher and the people of God, the the priesthood of all believers, maybe. Um, we're in a new phase, a new era of the church that seems to be unique for this time. So let me know your thoughts here. You go, you look at the Orthodox, it's like the liturgy, the liturgy, the liturgy. You look at the Catholics, it's the Eucharist, the Eucharist, the Eucharist. You look mm -hmm. at the Protestants, it's the preaching of the word, the preaching of the word, the preaching of the word. And I think we're coming into a new era where it's the communion of the saints. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. We're working our way through the Apostles' Creed. <laughs> Perfect. That's very good. Well, no, I think that's that's right. Yeah. I'm, before you said that, I was just getting ready to ask you, Paul, whether you think that um, like estuary is kind of like, and actually to, to build on your point, uh, uh, Graham, that, that the church can actually benefit from the estuary too, because sometimes the, the church has become saltwater, right? And need some some fresh water infusion from outside itself, and and there's a way in which like estuary is kind of like showing a, a potential future states of the church, right? Because I don't think like there, does anyone actually think that 200 years from now that we'll still be doing church in the same way that we are now? That seems highly unlikely. Church will continue to be done, just like the Orthodox right. are there. The yeah. I mean, there still be the layers. Right. which is really wonderful. We'll still see all the layers, like all that land Grizz is going to drive through on his way back home to Oklahoma. But this is the layer that the secular culture needs now for the heal for the, the leaves or for the healing of the nations. I'm is curious about this phase of the church that you're talking about. This, um, You had said the, the communion of the saints. Thank you. Um, I was listening to Russell Brand talk to Tucker Carlson. And I thought about the awakening. I thought about sort of this next phase. And, and is it that a lot of people are going to resist Russell Brand because he's not going to talk like like a Christian person. Like like you know, you were saying that there was a there's a there was a season where, um, or at least in the Protestant, it's it's emphasizing the preaching of the word and making sure we get it right. You know, and so systematic theology comes in. We do, we want to be right. And it's like Russell Brand's not going to be right. He's going to say a bunch of wrong things, maybe. But is it possible that he could be, like, kind of preaching to a a group of people, sort of like Jordan Peterson, who find themselves dislocated and, I don't know, not really feeling like they can go into the church because they don't have the right theology. They don't have it figured out, and so this is not my people. These aren't – this isn't my clan because these people obviously have it all figured out, and I can't be there. I don't have it figured out. Well, given his Fabian Society connections, I would suggest that he himself is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And if he were legitimate in his conversion, he'd be confessing a lot about the back room hootenanny he must certainly be aware of after being Megan Fox's handler. However, you are correct in that his target demographic is vulnerable enough to be targeted by one such as himself, and that we should extend our outreach to that vulnerable demographic in as many ways as we can. <laughs> I, I'm going to say something that people are probably going to dismiss as terribly, oh, this is exactly what a minister would say. I'm, I'm a little, I'm a little, I've got, I've got a cautionary feeling about brand new Christians being platformed extraordinarily for their Christianity when they've had fairly little experience mm -hmm. as a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that they have nothing to offer. I'm not saying they should be pushed to the back. I'm not saying any of that. But the, the relig there's no grift like the religious grift. Mm -hmm. you, you can grift harder and more destructively with a religious grift than with anything else. And what you have to know about one of the things I really appreciate about the the slowness with which 
the TLC and Estuary have grown is that we've had a chance to get to know people mm -hmm. and to get to know what they think, how they are. Um, you know, there are going to be bad actors and bad characters who do real damage in any kind of movement. And the faster the movement, the more it's at stake, the mm -hmm. bigger mm -hmm. the chance for someone to come in and really abuse. So, um, you know, I, I celebrate I celebrate the fact that high status, high profile people are embracing Christ and and they already have big platforms. So, but, okay, and, go ahead, Pete. Okay, so, sorry, sorry. Well, okay, if it's communion of the saints, if that's the phase, then is there a, um, oh gosh, you know, it would, it would be filtered, you know? Um, is there in a sense a, a an immune response to what you're, what you're talking about? Because I because I would agree, like this, this sort of the the quick rise and the religious grift, and there's risk there. And if we're in a phase like, and, and I think TLC is a an example of this, where it's communion of the saints, then there is accountability. I guess would be a word that's that um that would rein in some of that inherent problem that you're touching on. And, and the big thing about the internet is no gatekeepers. Churches have gatekeepers to become, and now Protestantism has pushed the envelope and suffered greatly for it. Catholicism had a ton of gatekeepers and shows that gatekeepers alone won't necessarily keep everything good and safe. So, but, but this, the internet is the wild west. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so yeah, celebrate that Russell Brand is a Christian. If Russell Brand came and visited Living Stones, would I ask him to preach? No. Yeah. I mean, if you're Russell Brand, people are going to pay attention to what you're saying, regardless of what you're saying. Right. I, I just, I just. So think I mean, I mean, it's like, I mean, I mean, I, I mean it's not. I mean, like, what we could. I mean, I, I would rather have him talking about his conversion to Christianity than other things he could be talking mm -hmm. about. Right. Because people I, are going to listen to what he says. Period. Yeah, <laughs> yeah to Grim's point, right? <laughs> and and he and and back to my another theme of mine. He needs a pastor. Mm -hmm. Now, to be Russell Brand's pastor in an in real life church, oh my goodness, I don't really wish that on anybody because, but he needs a pastor. He needs to be discipled. And it seems to me, just I, I don't watch Russell Brand hardly at all, but it seems to me like there is a real life pastor. Mm -hmm. But, mm -hmm. you know, does he need a skinny jeans pastor? You know, this is maybe where some of the orthodoxy and the Catholic have something going. Maybe he needs a, a pastor in a robe and a, with a big beard that's we'll say that'll dress weirder than russell and say sit down <laughs> russell you're only you're you're new at this novelty thing okay yeah um is the is the when you when you think of this phase and the communion of the saints idea do you feel like the internet is facilitating that do you feel like this type of connection like we can connect to each other in a way that we never have before and I, we I think, see yeah we see the church in a different way than maybe we have if we were just going to one congregation and that congregation exclusively right I think just like the Protestant, the, the printing press fueled the Protestant Reformation mm -hmm. in the better and the worse ways, mm -hmm. the internet is doing the same thing right now mm -hmm. with this current transformation in the church. Mm -hmm. It's the best and the worst. It'll be on the internet. And I, I, I want TLC and Estuary to be some of the best. Mm -hmm. so, so someone brought up something in the comments that I noticed that is kind of caught my attention. Like, so we're scrutinizing Russell Brand. Why, why don't we bring that same scrut level of scrutiny to to Jordan Hall, who's also a new convert? Mm -hmm. Like, why is there? Why do we have this scrutiny of what Russell Brand's doing and how he's talking about his his new faith? But we don't seem to have any of that. I mean, it's, you, Jordan Hall might be the single most talked to person in our within our space. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Jordan Hall is everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And no one has said, "Hey, maybe." Well, no one has said, "Hey, maybe we should give him a minute to work this out," instead of you know this bringing him immediately into the conversation. So I have, I have thought of this a lot and I listened to him in his case. Now I don't know because I haven't, I haven't called up his pastor in his case though. There's at least some circumstantial evidence that he is in a real life community talking to people who there's a degree of real accountability and community around him. Right. But, I, but you're right. You know, maybe before I would have him on the channel again, or probably before I would, let's say invite him, as a speaker to an event at Living Stones, I might do a bit of due diligence. But 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 here again, it's a little weird because we don't do that to our other non-Christian speakers. And so I still do use the line of church and not church. Um, I'm just thinking about knowing someone by their fruits, mm -hmm. right? And and so, like I, you know, we have a garden, and 
we've got apple trees and raspberry bushes and you don't know in the spring what the harvest in the fall is going to look like you have to wait and see <laughs> right and then you have to taste and see right mm -hmm. And let me say that some people aren't criticizing him, but other people are diagramming his sentences to determine the neurolinguistic programming he employs in his matter of speech over on the Broken Clock Tower Discord. <laughs> we can all sleep better knowing that the Broken Clock Tower Discord is on the case. We don't warn us. We sniff out the snakes. That's all. We're sniffing. You really need, you, you need a Sherlock Holmes hat and a pipe. <laughs> well, I wonder if... You know, we're we're listening to Jordan Hall at, almost like, and maybe this is just me, but we're sort of listening to him like he's another voice in our small group. He's not like a pastor standing up, you know, in the midst of a church saying, thus saith the Lord or something like that. Like, does that make sense? Like, if it's if it's communion of the saints time, maybe, um, you know, we're not saying, okay, this person is a pastor shepherding the flock, preaching the word. But as a fellow traveler, let's say a fellow seeker, you know, and and I and I listen to that voice um, like I would a friend, like I would somebody who's just in my small group. I'm not necessarily looking for some authoritative figure, if that's what a pastor maybe is. But I don't know, just a thought there, because I keep going back to this communion of the saints idea, and I kind of like it, and I'm still yes. working it out. Well, Sam's and comment. I thought Sam's comment was important. I don't know if he didn't, if you wanted to yes. come in to make this comment, Sam. Yeah, I mean, we're asking whether or not we should. How, how much uh, platforming to give Jordan Hall, but we're also talking about him quite a bit. So it's it's a little bit kind of a weird dynamic. But I mean, I, I, I respect what people are saying. And I agree, especially kind of more in like a Russell Brand sort of case of giving people some space. But it's also cathartic for a lot of people to hear conversion stories when they're fresh. And that's powerful too, like a baptism Sunday at a church. You know, where you have the people get up and say, here I am, here's why I'm getting baptized, here's my story in a couple minutes, gadunk. And so, I don't know. I think that you can still talk to people when they're fresh and that has a role, but just don't give them authority beyond their maturity, I think. And, and we have, we, we regularly platform skeptics and heretics and all kinds of bad characters. So we do that. I mean, that's part of the TLC. And there are plenty well, of that's part, The reason, I, mean, I want to clarify, the reason behind my question Paul was to was to call attention to the double standard. I don't really necessarily. I'm not. I'm not a put the brakes on Russell Brand person. It's mm -hmm. like, like I said, my point on Russell Brand is like, Russell Brand is going to have an audience no matter what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if he's choosing to talk about his conversion, that is better than a lot of other things he can be talking about, and I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. So I have an interesting dilemma in front of me, which is I was going to use this clip from Stephen J. Lawson speaking about the Great Awakening and its significance and, and bring it into context of our modern day. But now there's a sub theme, which is Lawson just stepped down as a preacher because of a moral failure. I don't know the details. I think this video is actually, I looked for a link for it. Uh, to share in the description, and I can't find it, so it might have been removed already. Um, but it's interesting comparing someone like Stephen J. Lawson or any of the high-profile pastoral figures that we have seen fall victim to sort of moral failures or whatever it might be. Compare that to a person like Russell Brand and his testimony to Nate's point um, Russell can share his testimony, and that is going to connect to people on a way that maybe not like a sermon, not like somebody who is, you know, sort of standing under the authority of the word and presenting it in a public manner. And yet the reality is that the people of God are imperfect. And so I wonder if we have had an unhealthy... Um, preoccupation with the position or the authority of a pastor, and that is about to shift. Will pastors still exist? Of course they will. Um, will they still have a certain authority within the body of Christ? Of course they will. But the body of Christ is a body. So there are some who are evangelists. There are some who are teachers. There are some who are um, just designed for other tasks within the body. And, and I think if we have an unhealthy preoccupation with the position of the role of a 
pastor, then we go to get sort of our spiritual food, our spiritual nourishment from this one individual person, rather than, to Paul Vanderclay's point, the, the communion of the saints. I went through a series, um, a season of life where it was really hard for me to read the Bible, but when I sat in a worship service and I heard the Bible read and talked about, it was nourishing, just like I would have um, early on in my faith where I sat down as an individual just reading for my own quiet time. That time was not as nourishing for me later on in my faith as sitting in the community of believers and hearing the Word of God and hearing it preached, um, but I wonder again if if there's just an, an, an a new type of awakening because, again, it's the Spirit of God that moves people. It's not the vessel like Whitfield or Russell Brand or Steve Lawson. 